Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Jenny and this is Arnold. And today's video is the start of a kind of series thing that we're gonna hopefully be starting on this channel to wrap up the books that we've read in kind of the past few months. So I've tried this in a couple of different ways previously. I did it with my TBR game previously and kind of just did it that way. And it just didn't really work. It made the videos very long or it just didn't make sense kind of for when I was filming them. It wasn't the end of the month, so it didn't make any sense. So we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna be doing this each quarter and just talk about the books that I've read in the previous three months. So today we're talking about the books I've read in January, February and March. And even though I don't read a ton of books each month, we are still talking about like quite a few books over the course of three months. So I didn't wanna just sit here and kind of talk through each of the books in turn. Some of them I just don't really feel like I have that much to say about them. So I wanted to do something a little bit different to that. And there are a couple of other YouTubers that I follow and I watch and they do reading wrap ups in slightly different ways. So Meg with Books, Literary Diversions are kind of the two that I have seen that do things a bit differently and in ways that I quite like. So I am gonna be borrowing kind of from their ideas and then seeing what kind of things we want to talk about in these videos. So my plan at the moment for this video is to talk about the stats, some fun facts and figures from the last three months of reading, then to kind of just talk through each of the books and the rating that I've given them, and then to talk about a few different kind of categories. And these categories might change each quarter depending on what things I want to talk about. But for this video, I think I'm going to do kind of the tops, the highlights, and then some kind of disappointments, and then some kind of overarching themes, some interesting trends that I've noticed and kind of themes that have flowed across a couple of different books that I want to talk about. So we're going to do it that way. If there's anything that you'd like to see me do differently or different ways you want to hear about the books, let me know down in the comments and then I'll see if I can do those for next quarters. But let's dive straight into the stats. Now, if you saw my kind of how I track my reading video from a little while ago, you'll know that I track quite a lot of things when it comes to reading and you may have guessed that I just really love stats and seeing the stats that come out of those different tracking methods and looking at the info, the facts and figures about my reading. So today is the 28th of March, so we're not quite at the end of March. There is a slim chance that I could squeeze a book or two more in before the end of the month but I think it's unlikely based on kind of where I am in the books I'm currently reading. So for the books that I have read so far from January to March 2024, I have read 14 books, which is definitely not high compared to some people's standards, but it's five in January, five in February and four so far in March. I have read 5037 pages and listened to 81 hours of audiobooks. So I do include audiobooks as both pages and hours listened. So it's not read pages and listened to hours of audiobook. There is crossover there, just so you are aware. The average rating that I have given across these books is apparently a 4.0 which I'm quite surprised by. That seems quite high. I thought it might be a bit lower than that because I feel like I've had some quite varied and mixed ratings on some of my books, but clearly I've had enough very good ones to kind of counter the less good ones. So that is good. When it comes to audience, eight of the books that I've read have been adult books and six of them YA, which I am very surprised by. Normally my YA section is like a tiny percentage and this is, quite high and we will talk about that a bit more later on. For format I read two physical books, five ebooks and seven audiobooks. So it's actually an even split directly between audiobooks and then physical slash ebook which makes sense because I'm usually reading one audiobook and then one physical or ebook so that makes sense. Twelve of the books that I have read have been fiction and two of them non-fiction. And then when it comes to the different genres that I've read, I've read one Christian book two historical, two mystery, four romances, two thrillers and one other. And I'm also going to have a little look at the stats that I keep in my bullet journal for my reading. So when it comes to my around the world spread you can see that it is still very kind of UK and North America heavy. We've uh, author, we've just had one Asian author and one African author 
And then for setting, we've had one set in Asia, two in Africa, and one that didn't have a setting. So that is something I really want to improve on and kind of make this a bit more of a spread. Obviously we've got nothing for South America or Europe, across either of them or Australia so it would be good to add slightly more diverse authors and settings onto this sheet. And then when we come on to the book stats obviously I've already talked about format and genre but you can also see that I have not yet read any translated books which I really do want to do that was one of my goals for this year was to read six translated books so I am behind on that goal I need to catch up We've also had three five star and three 4.5 star, which is good that those are both kind of ratings that I would see as like favorite books, top books of the year. Really, really good. And then at the bottom, we've got, we haven't had any novellas, no kind of short story collections, but two non-fictions, which is pretty good for me. I can't remember what the stat was for last year for non-fiction, but I don't think it was uh, particularly high. I think my non-fiction reading was pretty low last year. so. It's good to see that we have started reasonably strong with two so far already. So next let's run through all of the books that I've read so far in the first quarter of this year and what rating I gave them. So first up I read The No Show by Beth O'Leary and gave it 3.5 stars. Sophia Khan is Not Obliged by Aisha Malik I gave 2.5 stars. M is for Mama by Abby Halberstadt I gave 5 stars. Love from A to Z by SK Ali I gave 3.5 stars. Wildfire by Hannah Grace I gave 4.5 stars. The Treatment by C.L. Taylor I gave 3 stars. Our Bodies Their Battlefield by Christina Lamb I gave 5 stars. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens I gave 4 stars. 27 Minutes by Ashley Tate I DNF'd. So I do include my DNFs in my kind of totals and my stats and everything else that I've said so far, I just don't rate them. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson I gave 4.5 stars. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline I gave 5 stars. And Ready Player Two by Ernest Cline I gave 3.5 stars. Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus I gave 4.5 stars. And Homegoing by Yar Jesse I gave 4 stars. So now let's talk about the highlights, the top books I've read so far this year. And interestingly, two of them are actually non-fictions. Both of the non-fictions I've read so far this year have been five stars, which is brilliant. So let's talk about those first. So the first one is Emma's for Mama by Abby Halberstadt. And it's a Christian book about parenting, about motherhood in particular, and about some of the messaging we hear kind of in general in society, on social media, about motherhood and a kind of Christian biblical response to some of those things that are said, comments that are made, approaches to motherhood. And it offers a lot of advice and support and thoughts on biblical motherhood, Christian motherhood, and what that should look like. And this book talks a lot about a lot of different aspects of motherhood. I found that the first half kind of talked a lot about kind of theoretical mindset, kind of thinking things, and then the second half became much more practical in some ways. This is really easy to read and kind of really easy to get through. I ended up just kind of doing one chapter at a time um, but at the end of each chapter it also has a section that kind of compares mediocre motherhood versus Christ-like motherhood, has some action steps, things that we can do, has some questions to ask and reflect on and then also has a prayer to round off that section as well. So I think this is definitely a book I will be going back to at various times throughout my daughter's growing up and different stages of motherhood. The other non-fiction that I read was a very different tone, Our Bodies, Their Battlefield by Christina Lamb. And I think this was definitely both one of the best books that I've ever read and like the worst books that I've ever read in terms of kind of content and just how hard hitting it was and how difficult it was to read at times. So if you haven't heard of it, this book is exploring the impact of war on women, women and children at various times it was talking about as well, and particularly how sexual violence is used as a weapon of war. And this book did a really great job of kind of illustrating how this has happened for so many years, both recently and a long time ago, but also really centres the women who have been impacted by it and kind of what they've done afterwards, kind of the impact that they've had on their communities, on seeking justice and just rebuilding after conflict as well. It really doesn't shy away from kind of the horrors of both the actual violence 
and the lasting impact of that. But it does also really highlight what these women have achieved in so many ways as well. It covers a huge range of different conflicts, um, things that have looked very different from each other in loads of different places all over the world and also kind of touches on some other conflicts as well without kind of diving deep into them. And the version that I read also had like an updated section right at the beginning that was looking at the conflict in Ukraine currently and that had been written by Christina Lam in 2022. So it's incredibly up to date, it shows the kind of exactly what is happening right now in conflicts that are currently still ongoing and really just highlights the prevalence of this kind of atrocity. There are a couple of things I will say about it. I think all of the content warnings for kind of the content, what's talked about in it, obviously make sure you're kind of in an okay place kind of going into this. I definitely felt kind of towards the end of the book in particular, I was really feeling the kind of just the anxiety and the stress of having spent so long reading this content and just how heavy that was. The other thing is it does mention the conflict in Israel and Palestine and kind of highlights it as not a good conflict, so I don't think it's saying any conflict is good, but as one that has very organised militaries and therefore hadn't been having kind of sexual violence used in that conflict. Now that was written prior to uh, October 2023, but to us personally I have heard accusations of sexual violence uh, against both sides, both prior to that and post that. But it was, yeah, slightly jarring to read that whilst we're in the middle of that conflict. So yes, go cautiously into that book if you want to read it, but I do think it's such an important topic for everyone to be aware of and to be fighting against and to help women get justice for these kind of crimes and the lasting impact that they have had across the world. The final five star that I've had so far this year was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline and this was a reread, so I had read it before and given it five stars previously. So I think that definitely does, you know, help a book be a five star read because it's a bit more of a comfort read. I know the story already, I know it's going to be enjoyable and an easy listen, but yeah, it was still just really enjoyable the second time round. Um, I find this such an easy audiobook, an enjoyable audiobook to listen to and you're just kind of really immersed in the world of following all of these different quests that the characters are going on. If you haven't read these books before, this is a sci-fi series that the first book is kind of set in this future world where they have created a kind of virtual reality world that people basically spend all their time in and do everything in. And the creator of this world has passed away and kind of left this quest challenge for people to complete to kind of win his inheritance and inherit the whole kind of world and the system that has been set up and the whole company that set it up as well. It follows these, I guess, teenagers who are on a quest to complete this challenge and find the key to this inheritance. And that brings us on to the first of my disappointments, which is Ready Player 2, the sequel to Ready Player 1. So this was the first time that I had read this and I'd heard kind of mixed things, but mostly people saying it was kind of an un unnecessary sequel, which I do agree with. I liked the idea of kind of going back into this world and seeing these characters again and kind of continuing it. But I definitely agree with a lot of what people said about it just not necessarily being needed and the fact that in order to kind of continue the conflict they had to kind of step back a bit and kind of undo some of the like character growth and kind of storylines that happened in book one in order to kind of create that conflict and create that challenge to overcome in book two. So book two without spoiling too much from book one you kind of follow very similar characters and they have a new quest that they need to complete and to do this and the setup for this is very, uh, in my mind, like convoluted, kind of very techy. And to be fair, I don't know how realistic or unrealistic it is or isn't because I don't understand the science behind it. But it felt kind of unrealistic in my mind because I didn't understand it, to be honest. So now I did still enjoy kind of being with those characters and 
following them and kind of going back into this quests and the quests that were in this one I thought were still just as interesting um, and it followed a few different kind of worlds and references again very heavy on the kind of 80s references but different ones this time probably just depends on which references you enjoy and appreciate from each book as to how much you enjoy those I'm not particularly big on my 80s knowledge to be honest so uh, a lot of them go over my head anyway. I just enjoy the kind of quest and games atmosphere that it does create. I did give that book 3.5 stars so this is not a terrible book by any means. I just found it a bit disappointing compared to book one and I also just found the ending very odd. I don't even fully know how to describe it. It was just a bit disappointing and uh, yeah got a bit weird at the end but yeah we'll move on. Another disappointment that I read was Sophia Khan is Not Obliged and this is a romance book that I read at the very beginning of January so to be honest there's probably a lot of it that I, I'm just not remembering uh, because I read it a good few months ago but this book is kind of pitched as a Muslim version of Bridget Jones's diary and I'll, I've never read the book Bridget Jones's diary but I have watched the film and enjoyed the film um, but I think a lot of the reviews that I saw after having read it were kind of saying that it had taken Bridget Jones's diary but left in a lot of the worst parts of Bridget Jones's diary rather than taking the opportunity to uh, remove those and do something a bit differently. So I don't fully know how much it does uh, cross over with Bridget Jones's diary because I haven't read it but I could definitely see those uh, yeah like vibes in the story and in what was happening but yeah it follows Sophia Khan and she is writing a book about Muslim dating and kind of sharing her experience both of writing it and of actually doing the dating and what is happening and this book was just it felt very odd because it felt like at the beginning it was set up with these two potential love interests and I was like oh is it this one or this one and then it was kind of veered off in a different direction and there's one character that you kind of just think has the author forgotten about this person don't really know what happened to them and then they I can't even remember if they ever come back into it but they kind of get forgotten and we kind of move off in this other direction and there's this other guy that you're suddenly like oh that's the third love interest it's a bit confusing I would say the way that this book talks about fat people is incredibly rude and just kind of constant I think that's what surprised me most was just how kind of constant it was throughout the whole book and I have heard that's also criticism of Bridget Jones's diary and kind of one of the things that people would assume you would remove and do differently as this is published later but yeah it was very constant very rude and yeah just not a good choice in a book to be honest. Also the main character and kind of being inside her head was just quite unlikable in a lot of ways. Some of the thoughts that she was having about kind of her friends and their situations and kind of what was going on with her family it just wasn't necessarily a nice place to be inside her head so I would bear that in mind if you like having like a likeable main character particularly in your books. I'm not sure where my camera cut me off so hopefully this can be matched up but yes the third disappointment that I read so far this year has been The No Show by Beth O'Leary and I've loved all of Beth O'Leary's other books that I've read so far so this one was definitely disappointing but I still did give it 3.5 stars and the main point for that is because by the end of the book I did really understand what she was doing, what the author was trying to convey, the message that she was making and I thought it was really cleverly done, really well done, a really beautiful story that had been pulled together but what let this book down was the fact that the setup for the book is that you have three women who are all stood up by the same guy on the same day on Valentine's Day and you're following these three women and their relationship with this guy kind of knowing that he is dating all three of them and I think that just makes it really hard for you to root for any of those relationships or to want any of them to be with him or to like him in any way and I think that's just not a great setup for a romance if you don't want them to be with him or like any of them so for the first kind of over half of the book I just wasn't really enjoying it because I didn't want any of them to be with him I didn't like him 
it just wasn't super enjoyable. And then as kind of everything gets unraveled, you understand, you kind of see the bigger picture, you see what's happening, and you understand the story that has been woven together. I can understand it all, but you've got so much kind of time spent not liking this guy that it's very hard to then flip the switch to like him or to want him to be with any of the women. So it's just great book, really great, like artistically done, but just not an enjoyable reading experience for most of it, which is a real shame. Then the final thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is just a couple of themes that I saw in this first quarter of the year in the books that I was reading. So the first thing that I want to talk about was YA mysteries. So I read a few different YA mysteries uh, last year, but I've also read two so far this year. I've read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson and Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. And I gave both of those 4.5 stars. I really, really, really enjoyed them. I found the reading experience so much fun. I think that's the joy of kind of a YA mystery and the similar for YA thrillers is that you can have kind of the mystery, the problem solving, the kind of detective element without kind of some of the high, higher stakes that you have to have in an adult mystery or in a lot of them anyway to kind of really build that tension. You don't have quite as much of that which just makes it so easy to read, really enjoyable. It reminds me very much of kind of the books that I read when I was a teenager, kind of Famous Five, Secret Seven, all of those kind of things. Um, obviously more modern and some of them do have kind of more stakes than that, but it kind of keeps it a bit more easy reading versus some of the adult mystery and thrillers that I read as well. And I think there is place for both. I enjoy both. But I've definitely found recently that just some of the YA mysteries I've been reading in particular, I really enjoyed the One of Us is Lying series by Karen M. McManus last year as well. So I think this is just a an area, a genre, age group and genre that I want to kind of keep dipping my toe into. I want to read the rest of the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, of course, and potentially some of Karen M. McManus's other books as well. And just kind of make sure I keep coming back to this genre and reading what I'm enjoying at the moment too. The other theme that I wanted to touch on was Muslim romances. Now as I said I am not Muslim, I am Christian, so I can't necessarily talk about the Muslim representation in these books, but my understanding is that it is written by own voices authors who are Muslim themselves. I assume that they have kind of represented Islam pretty well in these books. I haven't seen any criticisms of them in, in that area in particular, Obviously, as I said, Sophia Khan is not obliged. I did not enjoy it. I gave that 2.5 stars, but I did quite enjoy Love from A to Z by SK Ali. I think I gave that 3.5 stars. It definitely had things that I didn't enjoy about it in terms of just kind of the writing and uh, I guess YA romance is not a genre that I particularly enjoy either because there were certain aspects of the romance side that I didn't enjoy. But what I wanted to talk about was just how I really enjoyed seeing romances in particular, both of these books are romances, portrayed with characters with a strong faith, a strong religious faith, or see in this case Muslim. And I think these romances and some other Muslim romances that I've seen do a really good job about portraying that and showing kind of religious relationships in a really healthy, positive way. And I think that's something that these books have done really well is just portraying the idea of not having sex before marriage, about kind of being in a committed relationship before you do that, and the difference between that and kind of very casual relationships that we often see in romances, it does a really good job of just portraying that and being unapologetic about that and just saying like, yeah, that's what we do, that's what we want to do, that's what we believe in, and that's what we're doing, without it being a big problem, a big kind of obstacle that they've got to overcome. And I think as Christians and in some Christian fiction that I've read, we can be very like apologetic about that and just kind of hide away from it, try and be a bit more like normal and cool and kind of like, oh no, like we say that, but oh, what do we do it? I don't know. And I think we can be a bit like apologetic. Whereas these books did a really great job at portraying that and showing that as normal and healthy and exactly what the characters wanted in these books and I really appreciated reading that and seeing that represented really well even if it wasn't my religion that was represented but having that kind of relationship represented was also 
really great. So those are the books that I've read in January, February and March so far this year. So do let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were on them or if you've got any recommendations for me based on the books I've read and the themes that I've talked about. I'd love to hear those in the comments too. And definitely let me know what kind of categories you'd like to see in future reading wrap ups too. I'd love to hear all of your ideas. But we hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me and Arnold. We create videos every week all about prayer, exploring the Bible, Christian life and motherhood, and obviously lots of bookish things too. If you would like to see all the books that I am planning to read that were chosen for me by my TBR game for spring, do check out this video right here. And we will see you very soon for a new video. Bye!